So I'm about to clean out the gerbils tank right here. They have had this section of the cage cleaned quite recently. So I'm not going to be doing that today, but I'm just going to be doing the tank. So we've got Joey first of all. I'm just going to put him in this cage here. Then we'll get the others. <laughs> They're actually all fast asleep in here, bless them. <laughs> I might just get them out with a chew because they're not wanting to be handled today, I don't think. <laughs> Trying to go in the tube? No, he's got more sense. Milo. So I've just filled the whole tank full of the bedding and yeah this is, it was actually Megazor before but I decided to go with this one just because we don't really buy Megazor anymore. Just taking the skinny pigs out because I'm about to clean out their cage and I thought I'd give them some grass whilst they're waiting just so they don't get too bored. <laughs> there you go, that'll give you something to think about for a bit. I love the purring sound guinea pigs make when they get excited for food, it's just adorable. <laughs> just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the guinea pigs. They're all fine, except for Bunny. As you can see, she's very withdrawn from the others, and she has been like this the last few weeks, but only the last few days has she just lost her appetite. In fact, yeah, like maybe yesterday and the day before, um, she's not wanted grass, she's not wanted hay, she's not wanted fresh food. Um, I'm very concerned about her and I don't really know what the problem is because, you know, she's she's young and she shouldn't really be having anything, you know, so serious at this age, especially she's always been healthy, she's never had any problems before, so I'm very worried about her, um, but I am just trying to kind of work out what the issue is because I don't know if it's something underlying. Yes, she's displaying symptoms, but it's really hard to know if that's the actual root cause or if that's just the symptoms of something else. Um, so I've just cleaned these guys out. Brownlee's actually doing so much better at the minute, as you can see. I think he just looks like he's so much better. Um, they're all doing okay, but I mean, she's even not been herself before they moved out, so I really you know, don't quite know what's wrong with her. Looking in the medical kit to see if there's any of the um, recovery food left. This for me is kind of a last resort because I absolutely hate syringe feeding. I feel very cruel doing it, but at the same time, you literally just want to help them. So um, it's worth a go seeing something else is working. I don't know why this is so dusty, probably because I don't use it very often. What's well, not in there? There's a few syringes. There we go, we've got a sachet left. I actually haven't really been in here for a while. I've just got some random stuff left. I'm gonna give this a go. Here is the syringe. It's a bit of a monster of a syringe. Like, look at the size of that compared to your normal syringes, but you just don't get it up these ones. That's the problem. So, we'll have to go with the big one. That's what we got given anyway with the recovery food stuff. We actually got this when Aurea was poorly as well. Um, kind of for the same thing, so you know it's worth a try. I'm just going to use half the sachet because I doubt I'm going to get like a quarter of this down, but it's worth a try, you know. So we'll try that for now. Mix it with the water. 
Mmm, that looks so appetising. Look at that. That looks absolutely vile. <laughs> that actually looks disgusting. So give it a nice stir. <laughs> Why does it look like pond water? Okay. Right, so what I'm going to do now, it might actually go up the syringe, it's such thin consistency. We'll try it. Oh, it does. There we go. <laughs> it's struggling, but it might just go up. Okay, I've got Bonnie with me right now. You can see she's here. Um, hey, sweetheart. How are you feeling? See, she doesn't look terrible, but honestly... The way she's been acting is totally out of character. Um, I'm probably not going to film much of this just because it's quite distressing for her. Unless you like the taste of it, would you like to try some? No? See, I am going to have to like try and open her mouth and stuff and that'll be difficult whilst trying to film that as well. Like, um, let me kind of show you. So, you try and like prise her mouth open like that. It's such a big syringe, this is really hard to do. Look how she's sat right now, look at her back feet. <laughs> the rabbits are just watching this pigeon. <laughs> big wave! So I've just given her the syringe food and I'm probably covered in it now. And um, I only got a little bit down her, but I suppose it's better than nothing. And we did get some more fluids down her um, because she she has been having a bit of diarrhea, but also like it went from diarrhea to her not being able to even poop at all, probably because she's not been eating. Um, so what I'm trying to say is I do think the digestive problems are a symptom of something else rather than just looking at them as the problem alone because I mean nothing should have triggered it none of the others have been affected by any diet changes I've been really gradual introducing all the grass and everything so that definitely shouldn't have been an issue um none of the others like I said have been affected by any anything at all so it would be very likely to be anything like that and I know a lot of you guys probably be thinking, oh, why don't you just take her to the vet or whatever. Unfortunately, it's not quite that straightforward here. I have a exotic vet that I go to, but even still, the knowledge on guinea pigs, I still feel is very limited, um, unfortunately. And um, every time I've been to a vet, I have never come back with a useful treatment or diagnosis even. They always just say, oh, well, you're going to have to pay hundreds of pounds for all these tests and it probably won't even help. So, you know what I mean? They just kind of give up on them already, um, which is why I'm always reluctant and have to think, you know, will they actually be able to do anything? I know a lot of you guys probably have really amazing vets and stuff, and I really wish I did. I mean, to say we even have an exotics vet near us, um, literally last time we went with a guinea pig, who had digestive problems, they literally just gave us the recovery food and said, oh, we'll try with that, there's not really anything we can do. Basically, that was it. So, there is no point taking her in the car and stressing her out just for them to say that, honestly. Um, so, at the minute, my priority is keeping her hydrated, making sure we can get her appetite back and everything. Um, and then, you know, she's... Um, you know, still not improving, it's a case of, well, let's try and look at the root cause, that, you know, potential root cause. It could be something as straightforward as, yes, she has got tummy upset and it's making her feel bad, but it could be a deeper, you know, condition or illness which is causing these symptoms. So, I am really sad that Bonnie is not herself she's always the one to be loving food and she's completely out of it at the minute and we just need to like get her through the night so that's the most important thing take it one step at a time um honestly like it is tricky when you feel like there's nothing you can do and you want to help them as best as you can but you know the vets have so little knowledge on the subject of guinea pigs unfortunately um and they do hide their illnesses very well that's another problem I find with guinea pigs, it can be so difficult to detect what's wrong with them. 
Um, but I'm just hoping I've caught whatever it is soon enough and I can, you know, get everything properly working again as soon as possible. Today I am just packing some orders, I basically spent the whole morning just finishing off some orders, ready to go to the post office. Saver boxes, that's the taster box over there, um, dwarf hamster blend and pea flakes, of course, plenty of pea flakes. Um, this one down here is going to Finland because I'm doing a trade box with someone who also has their own business so that's pretty exciting. Then this is just a mixture of, um, that's Syrian hamster food and then there's like gerbil like snacks and gerbil food down there. Um, this one at the back I will go show you. This one's probably going to have to go by courier because it is quite heavy with this sand in. Um, so yeah, this is the new mega blend we've got. Um, there's one for guinea pigs with these berries on. These are like a nutrition boost, really high in vitamin C. So that's the new Mega Blend and same for rabbits only it's got licorice root instead. Then they also ordered some of the black cumin oil. So got to get finishing and um, packaging these, making them ready for um, the post and everything. So I'm currently like just in the process of filming a video for my other channel. I've literally just done all the like talking bits. I'm just going to shut this door. Um, so I've done all the talking bits and everything, I just need to get some like more clips of the animals, that's kind of what I'm missing out on. I would probably use a lot of clips from my old videos, um, but I just want some new ones to make it like a bit more, I don't know, I just wanted to get some new clips just to make it a bit more interesting. So the skinny pigs are out here at the minute, we're just getting some clips of the meat and the hay. and. Yeah, oh my goodness, Bino! <laughs> they do crack me up so much. They're very agile to be able to jump in there. <laughs> Tandy's in now. You better not pee all over that hay. <laughs> your lead back on. There we go. Big jump. Hilarious because Vinny always feels the need to have like a pile of blankets. I mean one is never enough. So he's got about four or five there. <laughs> oh. 